was in position number three. Then it's Boston tucked in behind. All the top ten cars basically made really nice, clean starts. They all got off the line really well. So that new surface may have helped. Now, a little bump there with Van Gisbergen. He's trying to put a move on David Reynolds immediately. They bump coming out of turn four, but he's not up far enough to command track position. And there are some rules in the driver briefing notes about how things are resolved when they are side by side on the run up to that fast chicane. They didn't have to implement them on that occasion, but that was a lot of pressure on Reynolds on the exit turn four on the opening lap. And already those two have skipped dramatically away from Waters. It's cold tyres, cold brakes, and already heating up in terms of the driver action at the moment as they wrestle these things around the northern end of the racetrack. The, the lead car's compelled at some point to turn in, and if he turns in from too wide, he rolls to the wrong side of the camber on the road. He's got more pace at the moment, Will. Okay, so they're bringing Will in. So they've decided to take their first compulsory stop, the first CPS, because he's being held. So they want to just make the pass now. Because you want to make hay, you want to get clear track position off the back of the stop. So you just got to watch the other car. They should have. Oh no, there's, still, there's trouble with the right rear. That tyre hasn't gone back on. Yeah, but I, were they, um, we didn't see the fuel at the end, so I'm not sure whether they were covered by fuel then or whether they actually... No, right rear was a drama gun. Yeah, right definitely right, right rear gun. So the, the right front man had to come back and use his gun. The fuel coupling was off, so there was some dead time there right. for the 17 car of Will Davison. And that's bringing pressure on David right now. Like here. This is the spot. This is the spot that Shane will be looking, and he gets down there. Do they make contact on the exit? And does David actually have track position on the way out? He got away with that. He went the high line. I would have had money on Shane being able to get off there slightly better, but he had more turning to do late in the corner. And David was able to get on the throttle and come off the corner really nicely. Turn one, Chicane. Now, Shane's looking for another rapid exit here for the dive bomb down the inside at turn four. Does he get it to stick this time? He's actually got more authority in the pass this time and has done it. Oh, trouble here for James Golding. That's had a fair whack in the right front corner, in fact, across the front of it. So he's had a nasty shunt somewhere and that's dislodged the front of that car. I'll have to drag him in. And there was a mechanical black flag issued to this car as well, the Mitty's electrical entry for Bryce Fullwood. Oh, that's why. So uh, he's mountain biked his way in there and then he's copped one from behind in the process. That's the reason now we understand what happened to James Golding. So not only is it done damage to the left side of Bryce's car, there's nose to tail damage on both those cars and it's destroyed the front of the subway car. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason for the mechanical black flag. So the door's opening and uh, that's a fair bruise. Yeah, so Will Brown's in the garage here. We've broken away from that onboard. And they had some uh, electrical problems with the alternator with that car yesterday and then it was running on battery alone. Oh. It's a little bit more than a battery problem now. So uh, he's ripped a heap of the underbody out of it across the top of those curbs and that's the reason it's had to come back into the garage, it looks like yeah. it. So we're starting to see one or two war wounds and now we've got Heimgartner in the garage as well with some smoke from that vehicle. Which power steerish. Doesn't it? That's not good. 55 to go. Try and make sure that he's got some fresh air going. So this was the thing that you talked about before. And uh, they weren't actually in the end side by side when they got up there. But when Thomas had to abandon ship and drive straight through the traffic island, you know that he was under pressure. But the po the point that you're supposed to make the call is back at the 150 marker. So I think what actually ended up happening is that Thomas, in the end, outbraked Brody to go in there. And as it turned out, there you go, we're fixed now anyway. Both of them <laughs> run straight through. <laughs> They've both done it, so it's now self-cancelling. That'll give them a headache in race control, trying to unpack that. No, it's okay for him to just hit me to gain the position, huh? <laughs> give it back. Was no, there. he should give it back. And, and would it be a steering wheel? So he's oh. actually rattling it on the spline at the moment. Would it be the wheel or it be something perhaps related to the column? But he was rattling away on it there and they're standing by with another. You yeah. know, yanking on it when you've got no power steering effect and the car's not being moved by the go-jacks. You don't want people 
pulling on the wheel when the car's in the shop or when it's at the racetrack and yanking on the thing because it puts that sort of stress and load into it. So it's one of those little micromanagement things you've got to be really careful of. As Scott Pye gets down the inside very nicely in the L-spec car with Thomas Randall. That's a nice move. Gets him into the top ten. This is now Nick Perkat down the inside of the coat car of Chris Pitler. So we're just going through a few of these nice manoeuvres. There's Mostert now on Deeper Squally. Second fastest car was Will Davison because he's just taken rubber and here comes Mostert down the inside. He actually did that pretty nicely. Both of them giving each other a bit of respect. It's going to be a drag race though by the time they get up to the high speed chicane. And right of way will belong to Chaz Mostert. Cam knows that and he drops in behind. Nice. Yeah, so He's showing that extra bit of pace that we talked about before quite handsomely there at the moment. Reynolds was the third fastest car on the last lap. What was it all about? So cleanly through the... F oh, no. Oh. Through the first part of the chicane. That's why it was filled with smoke. How did he get away with that? He should bless himself after that one. So he's thrown it in there speedway style. It's clobbered the exit barrier, and then he spun it on the exit. Check this one out. And he's picked up the throttle. His go-kart picked up the throttle to keep it off the wall, and that's the reason why there was all the choking smoke. Ride with this one, folks. Uh, bummer. Wow, so Mostert and Waters have now come to the lane. That's a bit of a miracle to get away with that one. Unbelievable. Teams, badge, watermanship, flags to car three and car two, exceeding track limits. So that's Dick Perkat and Tim Slade. Here's the wheel change. No, they tighten it. Or they tighten it, right. Yep. Just waiting on the rear tire. That is amazing. So they've actually done it with ease in the end. And then you're driving the car as little, in terms of little steering input, as little steering input as possible, you drive it off the, off the corner nice and straight. Cam Waters down the inside, gives him a bump, and he'll end up alongside him. Now, he might give that one away, he which has. he sort of has. Yeah. So this battle between Cam Waters in the Monster Energy car and Anton Di Pasquale is an argument over fifth position. That looked a little bit scary. Tim Slade just covering here into turn 11. We've still got 14 laps remaining, so it's near enough to 20 odd minutes of racing. And drivers covering and moving in all directions here. So this is a wild little three-way battle. And you've got Tim Slade, <laughs> and he's got Jack LeBron and then just tucked in behind is Lee Holdsworth. And they're all moving on each other, so trying to figure out who you're covering and who you're racing and who you're shooting and who you're defending from yeah. is actually a hard thing to figure out at the moment. He used too much of the kerb to get down the inside, so he's got to be conservative enough. It's probably more a little mistake for David. You do not have a bad sports flag. For him. do not have a bad sports flag. Second placing is far from resolved at the moment. Oh, down the inside, Brock Feeney. Can he get this to work on Lee? There's a bit of bump and grind. And he manages to displace him and moves up one spot. So that gets him up into 15th position. This battle here is looking pretty intriguing. Last lap, 2.9 kilometres and 15 corners to run. Van Gisbergen is going to win this bar some catastrophe. But Reynolds, Mostert and Davison still well in the hunt. And especially the battle for third position at the moment. Mostert hanging on Ooh. and only barely hanging on grip-wise because those tyres have seen better days. He only barely got away with that. Will has a sniff down the inside. He niggles and nibbles. He's trying everything that he's got to have a crack at him. On the gas, up the back straight. Reynolds is probably off the hook by now. So all the focus is moving to position number three. Diminishing returns now for Davison. He's got to try and have a lunge up here at turn 11, otherwise it's going to be game over. He has thrown everything at it in full recovery from a difficult start to the race. Not able to get it done there. It was a slow stop for him. Meantime, Shane Van Gisbergen out of the final corner has done a remarkable job, and it is victory number 20 in our championship season for the champion.
The battle for the Miners will resolve as a second place here for David Reynolds. And after a mighty comeback, Will Davison does not quite get there. Chas Mostert will hang on to third position. But a fabulous recovery by Davison and the Shell V Power Racing team to make a fight of it at the back end. That was an absolutely fantastic conclusion for second, third and fourth as we see the Red Bull Ampole Racing team all congratulating each other on what has been an incredible day again for them. 20 wins this year for Van Gisbergen. He is a machine. And this title defence has just been extraordinary. One of the best runs in comparison to champions through history, one of the best seasons of all time. And this man, we said at the start of the year, how do you win this championship? You have to beat Van Gisbergen first. And that has been the story of the year. Beating him has been almost impossible. But what a great battle. He had a great battle early with Reynolds. And then that battle with Will Davison, who come back through the field after a drama with a pit stop, right hand rear tire problem that cost him a lot of time. He was able to pressure Mostert, and Mostert did a great job to hold him off in the concluding stages. So a very high level motor race, not as much drama as I thought there would have been, no. but a really high level motor race. I definitely oversold it in the heat. I hope I would have bet the house on the fact that they would have turned a few of these things into rubble earlier in the day and it didn't fully unfold. Well, well Cam Waters tried his best. Did, but he managed <laughs> to rescue it. So that was a, an amazing recovery for him. But this has been a beautiful drive this afternoon here from Van Gisbergen, who's looking at a margin at the end of an hour and 45 racing of 16.8 seconds. Confirmed on the results for you there from David Reynolds. And Congratulations to everybody at Penrite and Grove Racing for getting that result together today because they've been through some tougher times in the recent past and remembering that that car went through a gigantic rebuild. And then Chaz Mostert clinging to third place in the end in a fascinating battle with Will Davison. Cam Waters also recovering home in fifth position. Deep Pasquale and Kostecki, followed by Courtney, Winterbottom and Percat. Further afield there, heading the next group was Thomas Randall. And unfortunately for Andre Heimgartner, engine problems curtailed his activity today.